everyone. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this nice apple. So it's going to be a still life apple. This is my little apple that I'm going to be painting with acrylic paint. So I just put it on this little lid because I kind of wanted to see that nice shadow that it's going to cast. And you might want to be in a room that you can either put down one of the shades and have light casts on it or like just leave up all the shades and have the window kind of cast the direction of the, that um, shadow. So I'm going to put this over on the side and I have all my paints ready already. Okay, make sure you have your water and you have some of your rags here and a couple different brushes is always nice to use. And you might want something that's a little bit smaller for some detail. So I have um, three different size brushes. I probably won't get into this one too much, but this is what I have to use. Okay, I'm using a watercolor piece of paper, so a stronger piece of paper to start my drawing with, and I'm going to start to draw with my pencil first. All right, so I just drew the apple on here. And I'm going to start painting. So the first thing I'm going to start with is an underpainting. And I have kind of a neutral, a neutral kind of oxide color on here. And I'm going to start with that. A lot of times we do these underpaintings so that you're building up the paint. I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush just because this paint was sitting out a little bit. And I'm going to mix that paint, and this is all dry from the last time I used it. Remember, you really don't have to wash off your palette as long as it is um, drying on there, and eventually you'll be able to peel it off. So what I'm going to be doing is going over my entire apple with this kind of neutral color. So um, now we're going to figure out what, what are we going to do for this background? Are we going to leave it white? If you're going to leave it white, think of like how you would paint it white and give it some sort of contrast on the sides of it. Um, because if you just have pure, pure white, it's not going to be as interesting. It will look unfinished. The painting's not going to look finished. Think of a canvas that had um, nothing in the background, not even white paint. So that's where you have to think of, let's get something in there. I'm going to use my flat brush for this, and you could use uh, just a bigger round brush. And let's think about what we want to do. Um, so I am going to, because I have it on this white surface, I'm going to do white, but I'm going to do some white. And... Then I'm gonna make it fade off a little bit. So I'm kind of painting my white right against these, this edge and you're definitely gonna overlap that edge. The one thing I really, really, you know, you don't wanna do is to have this kind of white edge around your paint, okay? And this, this is so sort of transparent that I need to make sure that I have something else in there. So let's get, I'm going to take a little bit of, oh no, okay, let's get a little bit of this in there. And honestly, I really do like to do backgrounds because 
it um, is it's easy to blend because you've got all this space and you can have some really nice marks in there with your brush. Uh, let me get my other. Okay, so I got a little bit of black on my palette. I'm gonna have my black kind of come into this area a little bit. Um, you wanna have a good amount of paint on there if you're gonna do something like this. So, I'm gonna blend all this in. And this is my shadow, so I can't have this so dark. It can't be too black there. So I'm just kind of like gonna blend it, just put some down. Okay. And you definitely have to have a good amount down. Can't be putting it on too thin. I am going to throw in a little bit of blue and I am gonna use my white for the edge of this to, to blend in. Okay, and think of how you're blending the two colors on the edge. Now this right here, I'm gonna sort of back and forth blend this together. It doesn't have to be super smooth. But you don't want it too choppy either, I wouldn't say. To do this because I just like the texture that it that brings out you know it gives a little bit of um, like worked the element is work you know the, the background is worked so I'm just using my rag and I'm kind of going along with the the um, the edge of that in a way and doing little swirls okay and you know here this this area this is actually this needs a little more, more work and a little more help to kind of bring it down and make it so that it kind of comes down into a completed area and this could be a little darker as it travels over towards the dark portion of the painting okay true color of the apple so See what I've got on this brush. So 
No. My brush is a little sticky, so I definitely have to wash this one off again. And uh, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some of my true color. So I'm going to use some red. Here we go. Finally using the red, right? Okay. Now, if it's sticky, go ahead and, which mine's been sitting for a little while waiting, so mine's a little sticky. I want to get a little bit of water worked into this. Okay, and I'm going to start to paint this on. And I want a little more water, because I'm going to do almost like a little transparent coat. But this right here, this is pretty um, solid red, but it has a lot of... It has a lot of um, uh, reflection in it. Look at how deep that red is now. So I do have, a, I've got a lot of reflection and you gotta really think about like how you're pulling this apple together with its shape. So come down and around, okay? So for this side, I've got a good swipe of the red of the apple right in this area. Make sure you're going over the background a little bit. You know, you don't want that edge right around it because that's the funny thing that happens sometimes that you have to correct that. back again and I'm going to put some of uh, my yellow in now. So I, I am going to put a little bit of white down first. So right in where I'm seeing my strong yellow of my apple and it's actually some of the highlight. I'm putting some white down. I'm going to put a little bit of my highlight in here. And this I'm going to blend out those the edges of it. Okay. Uh, since I've got my white on in my hand, I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to use it. Just add a little bit of water. <clears throat> Adding a little water and let's check this out. Let's see how thin this will be. So I'm thinning it down with water and sometimes this becomes a little bit tricky because when you thin it down too much, it becomes like milky and you, you know, you sort of get like this little um, area that, that it's like a puddle of milk, you know, where you stop or you see, I, I had that edge right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see that so much. But this is like where the the um, shine is coming back around on this. So uh, I'm gonna use a dry brush, get that edge kind of blended in a little bit. And that's what I would do here as well. So this like area over here, I blend in that edge just a little tiny bit. Okay, because it's stronger right in the center of my highlight. So I sort of blended the edge out of it a little bit. Okay. This is some of my highlight and reflection. And I don't want it to be too stark right here because it's not. It's kind of just a glare. So you'll have these areas that are very, very white. And then some of them that are sort of like a milky white because you want to see the color in between. 
Under it, I mean, not in between. Kind of in between. It's like sandwiched in there, I guess. Okay, so just around the edge of that. Alright, and a little tiny bit. I'm going to get some, I'm going to get a little bit of green going because I haven't done that yet. While this dries, I, I know I got my yellow on me. A um, little bit of my green again. <clears throat> And if you remember, if you want like a green that actually has like a sagey kind of green, you can use black with yellow. Just a tiny touch of black with yellow is going to give you the sagey type of green. Okay, now I use my oxide with this and just a little bit on the stem. And again, what's nice is I've got that underpainting underneath it, so it's making everything a little darker. And you'll notice, you know, that that really works when you're doing the underpainting first. It really does work. All right, now let's try a little bit of this on top. This is where it's pretty yellow, right in here. And then everything kind of blends. If you don't like it, it's paint. You go back over it, and that's that. Okay. Good luck, guys. <laughs>